I've started with some one and a half inch thick black butt timber and I've just planed the faces so it's a little bit nicer, won't take too much sanding later. And then what I've done is I've cut the length to 50 centimeters because that's the size of the jig that I'm going to use in the next step. Now the width doesn't matter, just however wide it is is how many strips we're going to get out of this wood. What I'm going to do in this first step is I've got the table saw set to three centimeters and I just want to cut this into uh, three centimeter strips each way. So starting it up. Okay, so they're now three centimetres one way. I'll just turn them around and run them through again to get them uh, nice and square. That'll be all done, ready to take to the next step. After a coarse bit of sanding to get rid of some of the saw marks, the next step is to turn the uh, cubic piece into a hexagon. So the easiest way to do this is to put in the router a uh, 45 degree half inch chamfer bit. And by freehand, I'm just gonna take off all four of the edges. Now I don't really need to worry about making the ends of the corners nice because that's going to be a throwaway bit in the jig. So I just have to run it straight through the middle and it'll be good to work with. Right, so there you have the uh, hexagonal piece ready to take to the next step. Now this could have been done also on the table saw by tilting the blade, but that gets sort of a bit fidgety with narrow pieces like this. So uh, since you need a router to make these beads, you might as well do it this way. Now for the main step in making the beads, I have a 19mm V cutter attached to the router. And what I intend to do is along the strip, every 30 millimeters to just cut another score all the way around and then I'll end up with a rod that's just full with beads ready to be cut off. <coughs> now because of the large size of this bit I've had to use one of the large collars and it doesn't fit in any of the uh, router fingering jigs I have so I had to make up one myself. So. What this has is it has fingers every six centimeters, and I've got two offset series of holes. So I can place it in one, make the six centimeter cuts, then I can take it off, shift it three centimeters across, and it will make the other cuts. And as you can see by the uh, divots I've made in the jig from previous times, I'm gonna end up with a cut every three centimeters and that will make my bead. So I'm gonna clamp it in place and then just progressively cut, slide, rotate around until I get the whole thing done. So set the piece in place so it's sitting uh, right in the middle of the uh, series of fingers. Clamp it in place and just make a mark so that way when you take it out and rotate it between each step you'll be able to replace it back in the right spot.
stun clamp, take it out, rotate 90 degrees, set it back on the line you marked and clamp it back in and just keep going until you've done all four sides. <coughs> so once the routing's done, you should end up with a nice strip that's just made up of all the beads. So the easiest way to get them apart nice and straight and to do it quickly is to just start going through it. Okay, so get rid of the end piece. One by one, start to get your nice little beads off. I like to set up a little corner piece here that pushes them up so it's all centered. So that way I can just hold them in. And just rapidly drill them all one at a time. So I sand the end faces flat first where the hole is and then I just go around and gently rotate each one of the three different axes so that'll curve the corners off a little bit and just got to be very light or else you can burn the wood. Finish off some of these corners a little bit. I finished these beads off by dipping them in a non toxic water based dye. Then when that dye has dried out, I've got a mixture of beeswax and mineral oil which I use to seal the beads and protect them from moisture damage. <laughs> 